Welcome to Istakhstan TV News. Let's remember the Holocaust by stopping a new one as it happens. Today we mark one of the most solemn occasions in man's sacred history. A low point that scars our memory and stirs the human conscience. The Nazi Holocaust. Aimed first at Jews, and then at other ethnic groups. The handicapped, the others who meant evil. Materialistic ideology scapegoated. This genocide stands out as especially memorable. First, because of the central role of the Jews in the cultural and the religious history of the world. And second, because of the mass murder wasn't committed in some obscure, underdeveloped land which didn't keep records. The most leader society in human history organized it and pursued it. And it kept meticulous records of the hair and the dental gold and shoes produced as byproducts. Ever again? But we are in danger of rendering the Holocaust almost meaningless, indeed of making a mockery of our noble promise, never again. Because of a mass genocide is happening again, right before our eyes, it's being perpetrated by a highly industrialized, bureaucratic regime with a materialistic worldview. The subjugation and slaughter once more are aimed at a scapegoated religious and ethnic group. Once more. Non-violent and apolitical civilians are being worked as slaves in camps to the profit of corrupt, inhuman companies allied to the regime. Again, products flow from the factories and corpses from the camps. Today, as in 1940s, the innocent are subject to cruel medical abuse by doctors without conscience, allegedly for the greater good. Uyghurs are the new Jews. Have you guessed yet what we are talking about? You probably have. Because unlike the Nazi Holocaust, which was mostly hidden from the view by the fog of war, the genocide of Uyghurs at the hands of communist China is widely documented. It's not some filthy secret, which even the Nazi wouldn't mention in public. Instead, news stories appear all the time, though many media won't print them, revealing that China's government have imprisoned millions of people for their ethnicity and religion, that it uses them as slave labor in factories, that make parts for Apple and Nike. Would Americans have bought Volkswagens if they were made by Dutch prisoners in 1940? Then why do we patronize these ruthless companies today? Because they posture about racial injustice in America? What the Uyghurs oppressed by China would give to have such companies speak up for them? Kidneys and livers cut out of prisoners of conscience. Forbes magazine even showed that China makes millions each year stealing organs from the bodies of prisoners and selling them on the black market. Yet, Pope Francis' right-hand man, Bishop Marcelo Sorondo, appeared at a conference of China's official organ thieves to flatter that region and offer it cover for its crimes. It's easy and satisfying to bash our ancestors for not abolishing slavery sooner or ending segregation in a timelier manner. Progressives, who teach history in school frequently bash America for not doing more to stop the Holocaust, for instance by bombing the tracks that led to concentration camps. Each of those questions is interesting in itself, and we'd have the right to ask it. But only if we were actually working to stop slavery, genocide, ethnic cleansing, and organ theft from the happening in our time with the full complicity of Western corporations and silence of the Western governments. But that takes too much effort. It might require some sacrifice. It would likely to get you targeted by one of the China's well-funded, willing accomplices who work to cancel or silence critics of that region and its ongoing genocide. The new national socialism. The Chinese regime has gone by beyond Marxism and now embraces a racist national socialism, no more humane than prevailed in Germany. The Chinese government locks down into our cities, such as Shanghai, in pursuit of crude and politicized zero-COVID goals. When starving and desperate civilians leap from their balconies, the party sends drones to buzz the high-rises and blast them with propaganda. What kind of government wills sick people in their homes to die? The kind that perpetuates genocides. We warned against the rising ideologies of evil in our 2014 book, The Race to Save Our Century. In the years since it appeared, we have become ever more alarmed that the West today is ready to repeat its catastrophic errors of the past. 
China is currently arming itself faster than Nazi Germany did in 1930s. It's preparing for foreign adventures that threaten neighboring countries. It's liquidating ethnic and religious groups and working them as slaves. It's stealing their organs and selling them, albeit not as lampshades, but illicit kidneys and livers for wealthy medical patients. Who's next in the crosshairs? How much more needs to happen before people see the almonds parallels between this regime and Hitler's? What will it mean if China gets away with its savage assault on Uyghurs? That's a question it's actually possible to answer. Will the authors of the next genocide after this one sneer? Who remembers the Uyghurs? Altaber from East Turkestan TV is supported.